Hello and happy Wisdom Wednesday. Thank you so much for tuning in and for choosing to spend some of your time with me. It's your girl Maria Milagros here. And during the month of January, we have been talking about fearlessness and different capacities and different what that means and different understandings and different ways to step into, right? So this week is no different. We're going to specifically be talking about race and fearlessness and having a beginning of a dialogue, an open chat, I guess, about race and fearlessness. And uh, so I'm going to start with this. When my daughter was born, actually before she was born, I used to have these daydreams about this little caramel colored baby with earth tone curls bouncing off of her head and chocolate brown eyes. And I really was convinced that my child was going to look like me because I have been told my whole life that the darker genes dominate, right? So when my child was born and she was bald headed and practically see-through and she had these piercing blue eyes, if that baby was not still attached to me, I would have asked where my baby was, right? But she was literally still attached. And then I realized the dominant gene isn't necessarily just because it's dark. It's the gene that is the most dominant in the family lines of both the mother and the father. So yeah, my baby's light. Um, and then I found myself crying from a space of emotion and exhaustion and overwhelm and love and relief. I found myself crying from a place of relief and I realized that I felt relieved that my child would be afforded opportunities in this country that I was not afforded without a fight or a struggle simply because she looked white. Uh, this is real talk, y'all. I'm just, I'm trying to be real with you. So, um, it was a, a moment of relief and it was a moment of guilt. Like I felt really guilty, but I couldn't quite figure out why. And it wasn't until, um, later on when I really allowed myself to kind of process all of those feelings that I realized that I felt guilty because I recognized that by believing that she was going to have a better life than me simply because of her color, I had chosen to subscribe to what I had been taught about being Hispanic in this country. I had chosen to align right with the prejudices and the stereotypes and all the extra that came along with being a Hispanic female in this country. And so that's the part that made me feel really bad. That's the part that made me feel guilty was that I had the regardless of all the stuff that had happened that kind of reinforced that and the stories that I had been told and being told directly who I would and would not be because of what I look like. Um the worst part of all of it was that I, I aligned with it, right? I automatically aligned and decided that, you know, I could have some of those things, but it would have to be hard and it would have to be a struggle and it would have to be like breaking through all kinds of ceilings and it would have to be, and this, this baby would not have to deal with any of that because simply because of how she looked. And, um, so that was, that was, that's real. That's real. And if you've ever experienced anything like that or you get what I'm talking about, you can hit me up. You can put it in the comments, right? Let's talk about it. We need to start having more conversations around these types of harder topics so that the healing can begin, so that questions can be answered, so that people can, you know, find within themselves and within others these spaces of growth, these spaces of relief, right? So anyways, um, so what eventually happened was I had to start becoming more and more aware of the biases and the prejudices about my own people that I was aligning with, right? I had to start really checking myself and one, being aware, and then two, acknowledging when I was operating under one of these false prejudices or under one of these stereotypes. And I would even say things like, well, I'm Puerto Rican. And I find that just like... Even recently, I remember I gave a talk a couple of months ago and at the talk, they, the mic didn't work and I said, oh, not a problem, I'm loud, I'm Puerto Rican. And the people kind of laughed and then I'm like, oh, I, I did that. I played right into the stereotype. I did, mm. 
And then I, right? So it's like, one, we have to be aware of our own biases and prejudices towards our own people and the ones that we are uh, aligning with. Two, we have to acknowledge when we do it and make apologies when necessary, either to ourselves, you know, to the spirit realm, to other people, right? And then three, we have to be intentional about creating shifts. We have to be intentional about calling ourselves out so that we can start making movements that are closer and closer to growth, to love, to peace, to harmony, to recognizing that diversity is a beautiful thing, right? So, okay. So, um, those are the, the three main things. The other thing that I want to say is this, we have a tendency to judge other people because we have judgments for ourselves. We criticize other because we have criticism for ourselves. We alienate others because there's parts of ourselves that we alienate. We have prejudices about others and biases about others because there are prejudices and biases about ourselves that we hold on to. So in order to almost like try to create this balance, we do it to other people as well, right? And so all things begin here. All things begin here. We have got to start recognizing the biases, the prejudices, the stereotypes that we hold on to for ourselves and our culture, as well as other people. The way that we do that is we have to start paying attention and becoming more aware. We have to acknowledge it when it happens and then either apologize to ourselves, to other people, to you know, space and time, right, to the universe. And we have to be willing to do the work to intentionally shift ourselves so that we can realign with love, right? Dr. King's celebration, his day was just this past Monday. And one of my favorite quotes of his is, love is the most durable force on the planet. And so it's our jobs to realign with love because love, as Dr. King also said, is the only thing that can turn an enemy into a friend. And sometimes our enemy is right here, right? And sometimes it's out there, sometimes it's here. So we have to be willing to do that work when it comes to race and relations. And I just want to say this too, to end. Um, I believe that if we were able to actually honor, respect, and love ourselves, truly, truly, and then extend that same honor, respect, and love to every other human, all of our brothers and sisters who we share this planet with, all other issues on this planet will remedy themselves simply because economics will remedy themselves because we're treating each other with honor and respect and love. There's no need for competition. There's no need for comparison. And we'll just be able to have a flow that's very different than what it is right now. The planet will remedy itself because when we're operating from honor and respect and love, towards each other. We want to take better care of our planet so that we can leave a healthy planet to each other, right? Like, do you see what I'm saying? And all things go back to this. This relationship is the most important relationship that we have. And when this is a healthy and happy one, these become healthy and happy ones. And then globally, it becomes healthier and happier. So my request for you is to either begin, continue, or reinforce your own journey within and continue to do that fearless work because it takes a lot of courage to be able to really look at yourself, the person in the mirror and say, yes, you're amazing. Yes, you're unique. Yes, you're the only one of you that ever has been, ever is, and ever will be. And yes, you have some biases and some prejudices you need to work through about yourself and your own people. And yes, that extends to how you treat other humans as well. And yes, we can work through that, right? So that's what I have for you today. I hope that um, we can start a conversation, a dialogue. Either you can use this to start conversations in your own spaces. You can have a chat with me. You can send me an email. You can put it in the comments. Like, let's just be fearless and courageous and put it in the comments. Let's talk about it, right? Um, let's do that so that we can start to find the healing that we require in order to have the healing that we require in order to have the healing that we require, right? So that's what I have for you. Um, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you know someone who can benefit from this, please share it. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week, weekend, and the start to next week. And we're going to finish off the last Wednesday of January talking about, you know, the final piece of fearlessness and 
the segue into self-love and sharing love that we're going to get into in February. So that's all I have for you. I love you so much. There's nothing you can do about it. And I will see you when I see you. Peace.